Okay, this is going to be our third video on the mood tracking app. And what we're going to explore this time is saving the counts in between uses of the app. So a limitation of this app is that if you close the app and reopen it, the counts go away. You always start again at zero and zero. Often in our apps, we want to be able to retain information between uses. And so how to do that is what we're going to explore in this video. So I'm going to go back to the designer. And in order to store data, we have to use a special component from the palette. So I'm going to go down. I'm going to close a couple of windows there. Um, I'm going to go down to the storage window. And I'm going to select tiny DB and add it to my interface. Now notice it winds up here at the bottom as a non-visible component. So it says non-visible components, tiny db1. So tiny db is an example of what's known as a simple database. So db stands for database, and it's a way to store information so that it lasts even after you close the app. And we're gonna explore how to use that to store our counts of happiness and sadness. So. Let's go over the block to the blocks and see how we're going to make this happen. So what's really, really crucial about this is that whenever we click the happy or the sad button, we're going to need to update in our database what the value is for the particular thing that we're counting. There are a couple other things we're going to have to do to set this up as well. So let's go over to Tiny Database. The first thing we're going to use is set what's called its namespace. Now, what do we mean by this? For all of your apps, you only have one Tiny DB database. And so for each app where you use it, you need to specify this is all the stuff that belongs in this app and doesn't belong to any other apps. And we specify that using what's called a namespace. So for the namespace, we give it some text. And usually I just use something that is unambiguous in terms of which app I'm doing. So I'm going to call this namespace mood counter. And when I initialize, I'm going to change my namespace to mood counter. So from there, everything I do with TinyDB is going to be uh, with mood counter. In fact, I want that to be the very first thing I do. All right. So now with happy and sad button, I need to store in the database the values of happy and sad. So I'm going to use a store block to do that. So the tiny db store block requires us to give a tag and a value. The tag is just the name we're associating with the value. So I'm going to use happy over here. And then the value is just the updated value that's in my happy box. Now I'm going to do the same thing down here in sad button, except that I'll store the value in sad box like that. So now these are being stored in the database. But we need to do one more thing in order for this stuff to be useful, which is when we initialize, we need to look up those numbers from the database and use them as the starting values for happy box and sad box. So for that, we're going to have to use get value. So the way we're going to use get value is let, let, we're going to start on happy box first. So we'll say, I want to set the text for happy box to be whatever happens to be in the database with the happy tag. Now notice I'm carefully matching this tag happy for the get with this tag happy for the store. So whatever got stored back here, I want to get back over here. Now there's this really interesting feature over here when I call tinyDB with a tag, which is the value if tag not there. So I need to think about, well, if happy never got stored, what do I want it to be? The answer honestly is zero. Right, because if it's never been stored there, it means it's never been clicked and it's the first time I'm using the app. So at that point, <clears throat> I want to store a zero 
in happy box and then the next time it gets clicked it'll look at that zero add one to it and life should be good so i'm going to put that there and now i'm also going to make a copy of this and i'm going to do the same thing for sad box except here i am going to look up a sad of zero a sad of zero okay let's um let's try this out so i'm going to go ahead and connect so this will just take a moment All right i am scanning qr code Okay, so here's my app, you know, starting at zero, zero, and I'll click happy a few times, click sad a couple times, and now I'm going to exit the app. So I'm going to hit the little dots. I'm going to say I want to stop execution of the app, and I'm going to say, yeah, stop and exit. So the app is closed. In the past, when I did this, right, um, oh, yeah, of course, my companion has been disconnected, so I need to reconnect. In the past, you might remember when you do that, all the counts reset back to zero. But this time, thanks to using our database, when it starts up, I should have my eight and five. And. Well, I have a five. And a zero. Well, that's 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 absolutely fascinating. Oh, yeah. Why? Because I have a mistake. Let me show you the mistake I made down here. When I clicked on sad button, I still had the happy tag. There wasn't anything for the sad tag. All right. I have now fixed that error. So let's go ahead and do this again. I am going to hit reset and now let's put in uh, like four and two. Now I'm going to go ahead and stop the application, stop and exit. And now when I come back to the application, it should tell me that I've got a four and a two in there. So let me go ahead and rescan that code. And. All right, and it comes back with four and two, um, just as I had saved it before. Now, here's something kind of funny. If I hit reset and then I immediately close the application, so I'm going to stop and exit. Now, let me restart it again. So it'll take it a moment to realize, OK, it's disconnected. So let me go ahead and start it again. So you would think, right, that well, I reset it, so I should get zero, zero back, right? So now I'm starting it up. And it's still four and two. Well, that's annoying. Well, the reason that happens, right, is over here with reset button, I changed the text boxes to zero, but I didn't change the database. So let me show you a really useful feature of TinyDB, which is sometimes, you just want to clear the whole thing. And you can use tinydb.clearall to do that. So we can zero these out and then just clear out the database. Now I could store zeros individually for them if I wanted, but it's just a little quicker to clear the whole database. This is something you're gonna be doing a lot as you play with database-based apps, which is sometimes you want to be able to just clear the whole thing and be done with it. So right now I've got my four and my two, so I'm going to reset. Now they're zero, zero. I'm now going to stop and exit. Then I am going to reconnect. And when I reconnect this time, it should give me the zero, zero. All right, just a second. I am connecting. And I am waiting as it asked. Okay, it's established secure connection. And now it actually comes in at zero, zero. But it'll work great, you know, so I can put in like a five and a three. And now I will 
once again, exit the app. Whoops, I tried to exit the app. All right, stop this application. And we will, uh, yep, it's been disconnected. We will reconnect. So remember, I had a five and a three that time. And so now, when my app comes up, it should have a five happy and three sad. And it does. It works very, very nicely. So databases are a really, really powerful tool. You can save data indefinitely using them. So for your challenge on this video, I want you to add a third mood. And so you're going to both add a button for it, a text box for it, a database entry for it, and associate it with the color red and add it to the color mix. So think through all of that, make that happen, and then uh, pause the video, do all of that, come back here and I'll show you how I would do it. All right, welcome back. So the mood I'm going to add is, I'm thinking about like the fact that somebody can be kind of animated and energetic, whether or not they're happy or sad. You know, if you're sad and energetic, you wind up um, doing certain kinds of things. If you're happy and energetic, you might do other sorts of things. So um, I'm going to call it animated. So I'm going to start by adding a horizontal arrangement. Then I am going to add a button and a text box. And now I am going to modify them in all of the ways to which we have become accustomed. So I'm going to call this the animated box. I'm going to call this the animated button. Then I'm going to change their font sizes. This mood is going to be animated. Then I'm going to play around with my text box. I'm going to set it to read only. Oh, I'm going to make my horizontal arrangement uh, do fill parent for the width. Then my text box is going to fill parent for both the height and the width. I'm going to set my text alignment to the right. I'm going to give it an initial text of zero. And then I'm going to come in and program it. So here I need to be very, very careful with what I do. Some of this is easy. Some of this is actually pretty subtle. So something that's easy is adding my color ratio call. So here for the animated box, I'm going to call color ratio uh, for the, and that'll be my red. Now, something I have to be careful about is I actually need to make sure that I put animated box into my denominator. So that is something I am going to modify in color ratio. And this is another example of where it's great to use procedures because Remember, I'm calling I'm calling color ratio three times, and I would have had to make this change three times. And if you know I hadn't done mood color, I would have been making this change like eight times. Now I only have to do it once. Another way of thinking about it is, whenever you make a mistake and you copy and paste it, you've copy and pasted the mistake. So, you know, things changed. I had to change it, and I only had to change it in one place pretty slick. So now I'm going to go ahead and uh, handle the animated button. And that's going to look very, very similar um, to the others. This will be animated for the emotion. And we'll be using animated box with all of that stuff. And anything else? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to init I need to set the initial value of animated box. So animated box, animated value if not there is zero. Okay. So let me go ahead and connect my app. And um uh, Oh, this is funny. I forgot to remove the hint on animated box and it says 
hint for text box one. Whoops. <laughs> um, so anyway, let me stop the application and let's scan the QR code. And now let's see what it looks like when it comes up. All right, so check it out. We've got our previously stored happy of five and sad of three. Animated is currently zero. So let's add some animation. And that brings us uh, pretty red at that point. And now I'm going to bring in some sadness. Now it's kind of purple. It takes a lot of sadness to make it blue. We can reset. And um, whoops, when I reset, Interestingly, animated didn't go to zero. Oh, yeah, because up here in reset button, I didn't even mention my animated box. So let me fix that little error. All right, now I'm going to reset again. And now it actually comes out um, as white. Now, why is it coming out white? Because we've got equal parts red, green, and blue. And that does, in fact, uh, yield white in this case. And that's actually a desired outcome. So this is pretty cool. We've done um, some really neat work with this and created a really elaborate mood tracking app that um, stores data and retrieves it and makes it useful for other things. So um, that's it for this video. I'll see you next time.